Hey everyone, Flo from Off to Lens here, and today we're doing another cinematography breakdown. So this time I want to talk about my latest travel video, Friends of Australia. If you haven't watched it yet, I suggest you do it now and come back to this later, it's around 6 minutes or so. And by the way, thank you so much for the positive feedback, as always it really, really means a lot. So normally I don't really do this kind of videos for travel videos, I prefer to do them for documentary work, but I did have a lot of requests for this one in particular. So as always, I will talk about the way I shot it, the gear that I used, and how I filmed this one as it was a personal trip. I will also talk about how I focus on details, and I will also talk briefly about my way of denoising some of the nighttime shots. Before I start, as always, don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this one, and let's get into it. This video is sponsored by Film Convert. So as always, here's a brief background of how this travel video happened in the first place. So as you know, I lived in Australia for 10 years and we moved back to the French Alps in 2020. So this was the first time that we were going back there. And this time it was also our first overseas trip as a family. So we were there for a month or so and filming wasn't the focus of the trip. We were there to see family and friends. Um, but since we had Finn with us, I always try to make sure that I capture as much as I can. I knew though that I will most likely make a travel video and I will sell some of the footage as well for licensing. I wasn't really sure how I would be able to film enough footage since I knew that we would be very very busy with our friends and family. So I decided to concentrate very early on on details rather than making a traditional travel video. I wanted to capture what makes Australia and Sydney so special but more in a minimalist way. So in terms of gear, as you probably know, I use a 6K Pro and I brought only two lenses, the 16-35 Canon and the 24-105 Canon as well and they're both f4 with IS. I wanted to have a minimal kit with no accessories. I did really want to bring my 70-200 because I love that lens but I had already so much to, to carry. I think anyone that has kids watching this video will probably understand what I mean. I actually thought about capturing the whole trip first on a prime lens, like my Zeiss 28mm or one of the Makeys, um, but I didn't want to be restricted in, in range and to regret that decision when I was already there. I also had, because it's Australia, an Osmo action for any water shots that I wanted to capture. Uh, I did capture a few, but they're not worthy of making it to the final edit. And I did have my Fuji X100V for stills. And as always, all the gear will be listed below. By the way, I'm also working on my next ebook and that one will be about travel cinematography and hopefully will be released within this month or the next and hopefully it will help you create videos like this one. Okay, so now let's get into the actual breakdown. I decided to focus on the main sequences rather than playing the video in real time since it's six minutes. There are so many shots in a whole video, so I prefer to concentrate on the ones that I personally like or find interesting and the ones that represent the main sequences. And by the way, everything was shot in 6K, B-Row 12 to 1. All the shots were handheld apart from the three time lapses. Okay, so the first shot is the nighttime sequence, uh, which was shot at our hotel. So we arrive at nighttime at around 10 p.m. and this was the first 20 minutes at the hotel. I was pretty tired, we're all pretty tired from the trip, but I knew I had to capture this view. So for this one I used the 16 to 35 f4 at ISO 3200. I wish that I had a prime for this one, but it was actually okay. I thought an F4 might not be enough for depth of field, but but it was. Um, I did denoise in DaVinci a bit. I used five frames in better setting at around 14 to 15 for the threshold. So I wanted to have a silhouette look, um, as you see my wife here and my son um, are silhouetted because I focused on the background, on the highlights. So I exposed for the highlights and let the rest pretty much fall into darkness, like it's pitch black. Um, in terms of composition, I used the window to frame the shot. So you can see those lines here and here and here. And I thought it was pretty cool to actually use that to actually um, frame the the whole sequence. So I did shoot at 16, 24, 35 just to have a bit more variety and I think I ended up using all the shots in the video. So I maybe filmed like 10 minutes all together and I knew when I filmed this, when I looked at the shots on the screen, that this would be most likely the opening shots or the opening sequence. Next um, is this shot in Bondi. So I had a lot of questions about this whole sequence. This is probably my favorite shot of the whole video. This is Bondi Beach uh, where I used to live. Uh, we were there to see friends and as the day progressed, the light started to go 
crazy. We had that haze coming and the sun was getting really low. So I knew I kind of had to, to capture that. And because I knew the spot very well, I knew where to go to film to get the best view straight away. So I had the 24 to 105 with me since I wanted to have the range and as much compression as I could. I used the full NDs on the 6K Pro ND6 and I actually shot this at f11 and even f16 which is something that i pretty much never do the sun was super bright uh, as you can see on this shot for example it was straight like in front of us i had to expose obviously for the highlights here and here and that's why all the rest that you see here on even on the other shots for example like the foreground and the background the whole details pretty much gone um, just because it was so bright but I went for a high contrast look and I'm glad I did because I was really happy with the shot so in terms of composition I always try to have the sun like as you can see here or the light at the center on this one as well this was more because I was on one end of the beach I didn't really have a choice and I would either fill the frame like I did here fill the whole frame with the image or um, have a one-third two-third um, or even here, like cut the whole image in half just to find something interesting. Uh, since I didn't have a long lens, I put the foreground in all the shots. You can see here, you can see on this one as well, just here. Um, and you can see as well on the original shot, I tried to have a bit of people, a bit of the beach. So I did that repeatedly um, just to create depth. I did go down at some point on the beach to capture, to capture some close-ups um, to make sure I had enough variety. And I shot everything in slow motion to reduce the shakes since I was shooting handheld. And also the water, as you know, everything looks better in, in slow motion. The next shot is this one. I'm including this one because I wanted to briefly talk about this. This was shot on our second day in the city and I actually woke up at 5 a.m. to watch a Blackmagic event um, just in case you know they had a release or something like that and the event finished at around 6 a.m. and I couldn't go back to bed so I took my camera and I was like okay maybe let's try to find a window or something interesting because I knew that the light I could see from my window that the light was interesting so I took my camera and there was this hallway that had a window at the end and that opened to that bay so this was shot through a hotel window and you can actually see the reflection here uh, here that's that's the actual window so I'm actually shooting through the glass and I wanted to share this because sometimes um, there is no plan especially in travel content I filmed for one minute and I went back to my room that was it but I was very happy with the shot and it did make the cut I was still very careful about composition like so obviously I put the clouds at the top and I was after layers so you see the different kind of levels in that image the foreground the main area here, that line, that line, that line. So that really helped. And I exposed for the highlights again to create that contrast. Next is the ferry sequence. So this was shot on the last day. This shot is actually the only one that I had in mind before I even left because I've taken that ferry before and I wanted that shot. So I love shooting on boats or trains and the movement that you get. So I shot this with the 16 to 35 and I used the door as you can see here to frame the shot i like also the color contrast that i had naturally between the water and the um the boat i thought it was pretty cool i actually had to redo this shot maybe three times i think because there was a person that kept coming into frame then walking back um, but that's what happens when you film travel content this was shot at midday and the sun was super super bright so what i was trying to do is find interesting lines for example like i said here framing with the door having the the ocean right in the middle and then on this shot, for example, I was following lines. So these lines here, lines here, lines here. So this was more in a way to create something interesting because the light was so bright that there was nothing I can do to control that. So I was trying to put the emphasis on creating a visually balanced um, image. Also shot everything backlit and I film at ISO 400 and use again ND4 or 6 because I wanted some kind of depth of field. Half of this sequence is shot in slow motion and the other one in real time to show the, the speed. 
Now let's go into the nature and the trees. Since I wanted to capture Australia and what makes Australia Australia, the flora is very important. And most of these leaves and the trees were shot actually in my wife's grandparents' house in the backyard where we were staying a few days. And I looked where the light was in the morning and then shot it the next day. Again, ISO 400 with the 16 to 35. I wanted to have the light filter through the foliage to have a nerthy vibe. I wanted to also shoot as wide open as possible so I shot at f4 with a 16 to 35 and even though the lens is not a special one it did look good to me like the out of focus kind of areas here and here there's a certain like texture to it that I was really pleased with. I did change the lens to get more foliage and wildlife. Uh, I'll change to 24 to 105 to get this shot and this shot is one of my favorites. Um, this bird actually happened to be there and I went up, quickly grabbed my camera, came down, uh, was shooting in slow motion just to have a bit more, more time in case it flew away. And I captured that. I'm really happy with um, with that shot. Everything happens so quickly when you travel and I kind of like that. You work more on instinct um, similar to, to documentary work. And now a quick word about today's sponsor, Film Convert. So I had a lot of questions and comments on the grading and as with most of my work, I graded this whole video with Film Convert. I've talked about on channel before, but Film Convert enables you to add film color and grain to your videos. There are nearly 20 film stocks to choose from and you have real film grain. For this video, grading was very important since it's all about the visuals and I approach each sequence separately instead of the whole project. I really wanted some contrast and the colors to pop to showcase the beauty of Australia, but I also wanted a sort of greedy filming look, so I pushed the saturation quite a bit and used a lot of grain actually, around 25 to 30. I really wanted an organic look and I didn't want a super clean image. And as per usual, I used a KD 5207. And to be honest with you, some of the frames from that video are my favorites when it comes to grading. If you want to know more about Film Convert and how I grade my videos, I actually made a video last year about my color grading process, so feel free to watch it. And don't forget to check out the link in the description to get 10% off. Okay, so these next shots are by the ocean during the day. So when you travel, especially with a kid, uh, you don't choose a time of day. I wanted to capture the beach even if it was super bright. With travel content, you want to capture the necessary shots. So that means if you go to Australia, you're going to have to film the ocean and the sun. Since I couldn't do anything about the light, I focused on composition. So I tried to find interesting angles and lines. So for the first shot, this boat shot, I only showed a bit of the ocean. I want wanted to have kind of like a strong ratio. This is probably like one to five in terms of like the space that you've got here and the space that you've got here. But it worked really well and the reason the boat is in the center and not left or right is because I didn't have the time to get there. Originally I wanted to have the, the boat here um, but I didn't have time to open my bag, take the camera. So, so this is what I got. This next shot, I really like this one. And that's the, the very, very famous pool in, in Bondi, if you've ever been there. I used the walls of the pools like here to help framing the shot and to find the right balance. Um, it's still super, super bright, as you can see here with the light hitting the people. But I like this shot so much that I actually used it as the, as the thumbnail. The colors, I would say, of um, you know the ocean especially in Australia really helped in terms of the you know the blues and the contrast that you get everything here was shot at ISO 400 because it was so bright and I used a 24 to 105 because again that's the lens that I had and I just wanted to capture as much range as I could so next we're going to go to the time lapses on this trip I captured quite a few which is rare for me but Australia has amazing skies and clouds. So the first two, so this one and this one were captured at sunrise. I actually had to put the camera on a small wall because I did not have a tripod with me and I used my wallet to lift the lens to get the correct angle, but it worked. So I only filmed five minutes per, per shot to get those um, final, I think they were kind of like 10 seconds each. And I shot at ISO 400 and exposed for the brightest point. So this one for this one, and this one for that one. So the rest was kind of like darker and moody, which suited, it looked exactly like that in, in person. I tried to fill the frame as much as possible so you could see like the motion throughout the whole frame. Like if you only have the cloud that's too small, then you won't see the, you know, like the, the movement and the things changing. 
for the next one, this one, which is my favorite, one of my favorite shots that I ever captured, I think. This one was captured during the day after lunch and I used my mini tripod tabletop from iFootage, the one that I'm using to put the camera right now. Super handy and I put that on a bar stool. So I used a 24 to 105 and that was enough for the range. And I really like this shot, the, this shot, the, the movement, the composition, the colors even. And sometimes that's what it is. You're just having lunch and you see something interesting. And if it just takes five minutes, then you should capture it because you never know. And in both cases, I would say that the grading really helped in all the three shots and um, the shots are okay on, on their own and i'm really happy with them but the grading and the curves and the contrast and the grain really helped especially for for this one and then we get to the fireworks um, sequence i wanted to talk about this because i had a lot of questions so the question that i received the most was what about noise and iso this was shot again with a 24 to 105 at iso 3200 and I shot at f4 or 5.6 f4 to get maximum light 5.6 for this shot for example to be able to have a bit of details still um, in, in the background on the buildings so it doesn't look too too soft I did denoise the shot so I used five frames again in beta again but this time around 8 to 15 for the threshold I exposed for the highlights and this is quite bright and you've got the reflection here on the water which really helped in making the contrast between the light and the dark so I actually did not denoise this one first it's only during the edit that I went back to it and did it it's funny because I, I really thought that f4 wouldn't be enough and I was like I'm gonna go to 3200 eyes so and hopefully it'll be okay on the screen my screen was just noise everywhere like I had picking on and the whole screen was red um, but it was actually okay and f4 was was more than enough so when people ask me like is f4 okay for travel 100% if you can shoot this or this kind of shots then it's pretty much okay for everything. Having people in front, like that person here, or the phone here, or here, really helped for these shots in creating um, depth. This was my first time shooting fireworks ever, and I only filmed for 10 minutes, I think it was. This was in Darling Harbour, very famous, very, very crowded area, and I'm glad that I'm tall, <laughs> because I could actually hold the camera above or through people's head, which helped a lot. But that was my first time shooting fireworks and I'm really happy with the results because I'm, yeah, I really like those, those shots. It's something special and it has almost, it doesn't look really like travel or documentary. It just feels like a narrative piece or something like this. And I was very happy with, um, with this. All together, I filmed around 400 clips over a month, which is not that much. Um, normally I would film that within like a few days. Um, but some days I actually did not film at all. Some days I only filmed one or two shots. Overall, I'm, I'm really happy with, um, with the footage and thanks again for the great feedback. It really means a lot and for some reason this video um, resonated with a lot of people and I've had a lot of comments and that's why I'm doing a breakdown today. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this, this cinematography breakdown and then it showed you a different way maybe of making a travel video. And stay tuned for the new ebook about travel cinematography. Hopefully you'll like it and it'll be very useful to you. But I'll tell you more and I will actually release the video when it's, when it's ready. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.